Hey. Hey. Here we are again. Oh, sorry, I'm yeah. stealing your thunder there, Kate. Yeah, I was gonna say you you can you can do it this time. Good. Welcome to another episode of the uh, Waffle Cast. We're uh, lovely weather uh, somewhere wherever you are, or if not, then sucks to be you. I have nice weather here. I've okay, been inside sleeping all day, but raining. the weather's oh, nice. Stop raining. Oh, it's, it's nice weather now. All right, uh, as Guido said, welcome. Today we are going to be discussing sequels, bad sequels, and getting burned on pre-ordering. I'm sure we all have our horror stories of that. Uh, sounds like these two guys do. I don't really, because I've been lucky about pre-ordering. Um, anyways, who wants to start us off? Well, Jim, you were talking about some of the uh, pre-order bullshit why don't you uh, open with that the generalities that i find detestable mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah exactly okay all right <clears throat> we'll start with this comment that i've made before and i will make again uh in general pre-ordering is total bullshit you don't need to pre-order a game this is not 1989 if you go to the store they're gonna have a copy of the game you want they make a bunch of them you don't even have to go to the store. Now, if you got an Xbox One, a PS4, or one of those PC things I hear that play games, you can just download it. You don't have to pre-order shit. There is not a scarcity of games you don't have to pre-order. And they know that, so they try to get you pre to pre-order by offering you mostly meaningless bullshit. Incentives. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Fuck incentives. I hate incentives. I hate pre-ordering in general. And lately it's gotten to the point, one of my biggest gripes is it's just too damn confusing even if you do want to do it. There's, like, it's not unusual now for somewhere along the line before, a few weeks before a game comes out, somebody puts together a chart that shows this is the game, this is all the different places you can get exclusive content, and this is how much money it would cost to get you all that content right at the beginning. And it's always something ludicrous, like $900. Mm -hmm. Because each place, GameStop gets its own stuff. Best Buy gets its own stuff. Walmart gets its own stuff. Steam gets its own stuff. It's and on and on. It's just, it drives me crazy. People are using, you should not have to use an Excel document to keep track of everything that you could possibly get by pre-ordering. You, it should not take three hours of your life to contrast and compare all of these different fucking items and choose the one that best fits your needs. Do you want to watch Harley Quinn? Maybe you like looking at her ass. Do you want to play her? Well, then you got to go here. Maybe you want weapons for Batman. You got to go over here. Maybe you want something for the Batmobile. Well, then you got to go over here. And then you can get all that shit later, probably by paying a couple extra bucks. That's the uh, not another thing. It's kind of related to that. Is they're creating an entire game and then taking out pieces of content to screw you on the pre-order bonuses, bonuses, incentives. They call them bonuses. They literally call them bonuses. They're taking shit away from the game and reselling it to you and calling it a bonus. It's not a bonus. It's not a bonus. It's surprise sex is what it is. It's surprise sex because you have, you're just getting it, you don't want it, and you're just getting nailed by it. That Sup went somewhere I wasn't planning on going. <laughs> I, I believe I, I believe the term is surprise butt sex. But yeah, I was going to say, isn't it surprise butt sex? That's, well, I think, uh, frankly, that's I think surprise I... sex in general <clears throat> kind of meets the whole criteria, but I'll go surprise butt f sex. Why not? But, butt sex. Well, um... Like, I understand the digital download and everything, but people, there are some people that are very choosy about having a physical disc for their games. And with consoles, you still need a disc. Aren't those still in short supply sometimes? I know I've gone to the store, um, not necessarily looking for a game, but uh, somewhere near a release date for a game, and I haven't seen it there. You know, I like, 
I, I, I think pre-ordering for a physical disc is still viable. I, I think that's probably still necessary in some cases. I personally don't have any issues finding games when I want them. And maybe in, like, if you're in Los Angeles, maybe that's a problem. I don't know. In Des Moines, it's not an issue. Right. Basically what I do if I want a physical copy of the disc is I just go, I go online to the website. Is it in stock? Mm-hmm. Yes, I go there. Sometimes I even buy it online, but not even then. That's Usually it's after the launch date. If it's something that is a launch date, uh, what I tend to do is um, I've let it lapse and I need to restart it. I used to be a member of the Best Buy Gamers Club where if you pre-order, you get like $10 in reward zone certs back. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, uh, they used to let you pre-order on the day of release. So <laughs> I would wait for all the reviews to come out. And I'd check out the reviews, and if it sounded like something I'd want to play, then I would go pre-order it, even though it was technically already out, get my pre-order bonuses, and then get my game and be happy. But I refuse, absolutely refuse, to give my money ahead of time. Um, There are... I'm sorry. There are also people that don't have access to a store. They either can't drive, can't get themselves there for whatever reason, and pre-ordering online to have it delivered to them is a necessity. Also, also very, very true. Yeah. And I'm not, I mean, I'm not trying to pick away your argument. I'm just saying, like, there are still situations where pre-ordering is kind of necessary, which is unfortunate yeah. because they're screwing those people over by you know by creating what they've done with pre-ordering those people that have no choice but to pre-order are getting absolutely screwed over which is shitty you know it used to be that when you pre-ordered a game you just pre-ordered the game that was it there was no bonuses or incentives and now people who like really want a game on day one i mean i love having a game on day one i don't normally do it just because i've never really been big at pre-ordering but Having a game on day one is a big deal to a lot of people, and it's shitty what they're doing with it. Go ahead, Guido. You were going to finish, Jim? Um, as far as like people living in remote areas, that's, uh, that's very true. Um, if you're a 15-year-old kid and, like where I grew up, the nearest store where you can buy that game is probably a minimum of 30 minutes away. And we're talking rural area. You can't get on a bus and go across town to get it. You need a vehicle to literally travel 30, 35 miles to go get it. Wait, you're talking about horse and buggies, right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't, have, you didn't have vehicles at then. You the just had thing, horses. The other thing that a lot of people do not realize because it doesn't affect them, uh, in a lot of rural areas... Uh, I know Iowa because I live in Iowa and I work for an ISP. Um, independent telephone companies around the state and around other states too, they only they can only afford so much bandwidth. So when they divvy it out to their customers, they charge a fuck ton for minimal amounts of bandwidth. Mm-hmm. Enough that uh, you cannot download a game without maxing your bandwidth. I mean, you literally go over it, and you start getting overages. And if you're a kid, your parents are going to flip out. Because yeah. you suddenly just cost them an extra 50 bucks in, in however many gigs of overage. It's just it's just the way it is. I mean, and so, even if you get some games online, um, what was that last game? What was the game with the – it's a zombie killing game, the original one. You were in a mall. Uh, oh, you make Dead Rising. Tools. Dead Ri- is it Dead Rising? I think that's the one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Dead Rising. No, Dying Light. So, uh, no, is it dying? dying Light. Oh. I think it's Dead Rising. No. I do believe it's Dead Rising. Oh, okay. Um, that game, well, if you bought it on disc, that's great, but since they were getting ready to add stuff for some future things while they were doing their same patch, that first or second patch they did was like 16 gig. Oh, if, you're, if you're in the middle of the country that's and you're on a bandwidth limit a severe cap you just you literally just can't download that without going over so in some cases discs are good but they're not a they're not a cure-all for everything but um some discs i would prefer to have 
for whatever reason, I have more problems with discs discs on my Xbox One than I do with the games I've digitally downloaded. For whatever reason, the, the discs themselves are fine, but the Xbox, like, I go to the symbol that says disc, right? That says, mm-hmm. hey, Destiny's in here, and I click on it, and it says, do you own this? If you bought it digitally, let's go <laughs> to the store and find it. And I have to hard reboot, pull that freaking power cord out every time. But then uh... again... It only comes with like a 500 gig hard drive, so if mm-hmm. you're gonna do digital, you gotta get a at least a two or three terabyte external drive quick, because it fills up fast. Wow. Well, so there's definitely some issues with the pre-ordering, but yeah. um. Um. One other thing I meant to say real quickly, I can't remember the gentleman's name. I think he was a former developer turned journalist or. Or maybe as a journalist who went to developing and came back, but mm-hmm. he said, once you pre-order, once you've given a game company your money, they are no longer beholden to fulfill the promises they have made before the game is released. And I, I find that very, very true. That's what, when occasionally I get some wild hair that I want to pre-order a game, that is always the quote I remember. Once I give them my money, they do not have to deliver me a great product. They already have my money. So right. That's what I yeah, use. Yeah, they can deliver as is. Absolutely. So I think a big, uh, another uh, big deal to look at when talking about pre-ordering is, like, obviously you should be able to pre-order without worrying about getting screwed over. So you look at previews, but a lot of the times the previews, these, uh, you know, journalists are paid to basically give it a stellar review so that um, people will pre-order it. And, you know, you're going to, you you have crooked journalism in virtually every other aspect of, you know, the journalist world. It shouldn't be any surprise that it happens with video games, too. It's um, not necessarily always the journalists or the reviewers, either. Right. Um, the, the new Batman game, uh, all of the review copies that were sent out were uh, PS4, I believe. Four. Absolutely. Yeah. <coughs> it was the they most solid out, version of the game. Yeah, they didn't send out any review copies for anything else, and they didn't tell anyone. They just expected everyone to review this version of the game. Right. And then, hey, check it out. It runs great. It looks fantastic. Everything's wonderful. You should buy this game. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. So. I don't think there's actually all that much wrong with the Xbox One version either, but the PS4, I think, was, you know, the clear-cut winner as far as being a better package. Yeah, um, it had higher, higher, um, the resolution and frame rate, if I'm mm-hmm, not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Right. I know. I know. I touched on this before uh, we started streaming, but I watched Man vs. Game play his first playthrough of Batman, and I. It maybe I was just not watching when the issues happened, but I never once saw an issue with it. So either he got lucky or some of the issues were maybe overblown a little bit. I don't think they were overblown. Go, uh, if you want to see it like really going bad, mm-hmm. go, uh, you need to find the video of uh, Angry Joe playing mm. Arkham Knight. Because it just, like, it freezes on him, he restarts, it freezes on him, he restarts, it freezes on him, and just over and over, and he finally goes into Angry Joe mode. Right. I don't agree with everything that guy says, but he's usually, I think he's honest, quite honestly, and you can watch him go through it as it keeps borking up. Um, Jim Sterling, same thing, just, it's it's really, really bad. I don't think fans could overblow it, like... Well, I, let me just say, I wouldn't. I don't think they would actually pull a retail product back off the shelves if it weren't really that's as true. bad as people we were saying. Because that true. just does not happen. But that's yeah. that's the new world we live in with Steam refunds. Mm-hmm. Thankfully. Thankfully for the Steam refunds. Mm-hmm. So how about games that we have pre-ordered, or maybe not just pre-ordered, but sequels that we've gotten that we've gotten burn on? I, as I said before, I don't pre-order a lot. Uh, I've pre-ordered three games, well, technically two games, Borderlands. And Borderlands, the pre-sequel, is debatable. Depending on which side of the fence you're sitting, I don't necessarily feel like it was 
I don't feel like it was that bad of a burn. Like, it wasn't the greatest game, but, like, I'm not... Uh, you know, I had the money to buy it, so it's not an issue. But if I was a child who, like, had to work my hands off to get the money to pre-order a game like that, I would have been pissed. Right. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah. those two games were pre-ordered by myself, and then Jim pre-ordered uh, Dark Bloodborne for me, and that was fucking beautiful. <laughs> like, having that game on day one was amazing. Obviously, I've got nothing bad to say about that game. <clears throat> I don't either, and I can't get very far, and I don't have anything bad to say about it. <laughs> I, I pre-ordered a bunch of games. Um, mm -hmm. Fallout 3, uh, Fallout New Vegas. Um, Fallout 4. No, I haven't yet. I don't have the cash for it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting until it gets a little bit closer. I'll, I'll probably end up pre-ordering it because Fallout, but anyway. Um, Absolutely. Mass Effect 2 and 3 I pre-ordered. Um, and then Dragon Age um, 2. Two. Of all Which, of those, yeah. Of all of those, the only one that I really felt betrayed in my, you know, expense was Dragon Age Two. Oh yeah, it was an awful game. It it was terrible. I mean, the the plot was good, the the gameplay was fine, but there was there was no content. Mm-hmm. All, all of the all of the dungeons were just cut and paste, you know, turn this map 90 degrees, and it's the same thing. And there was no there was no character choice. And Jim and I were talking about it earlier, and it's just it's, yeah, it's one guy. You don't get your choice of four. Technically, oh really? Four races, male or female. This time you get a human male or female right yep oh. and the last name has to be hawk as yep. i recall because that's what people call you hawk and they don't want to read they don't want to have to record several lines of dialogue <laughs> right i i named my guy lincoln hawk off after uh, sylvester stallone in the over the top movie you know the arm <laughs> wrestling one <laughs> his name was lincoln hawk and i'm a nerd that's how <laughs> it works well you you accept that about yourself. I do. That's good. That's good. Um, I'm trying to think of any sequel that I just absolutely... I... Uh, Far Cry 2. I hated that game. I don't know why. I mean, I know why. Like, it's this relatively small area. There's not a lot of variation to the map. Like, you just drive around. Enemies respawn like that. Um, I just thought it was too small and too damn repetitive. Like, there just wasn't enough. The enemies were all the same. They respawn right away. You just go around killing them again, and it was just really annoying. I did not, like, I did not play the first Far Cry, so... Like, that's not a really good comparison, because I don't know what the first one was like, but if it was... I've heard Far Cry 1 was amazing, so I was like, well, sh shit, Far Cry 2 must be good, too, and I bought it, and so I much. absolutely hated it. I, like, I, that's one of few games that I've bought that I played a little bit of, and it was just like, mm-mm, I'm done, I can't play you anymore. I've gotten bitten on a few, and I've gotten lucky on a few that I was going to pre-order and did not, um, ah, uh, hell, what's that called? I think it was a PS2 game. The first one was kind of a surprise hit, and the second one was not, lead character's name was Dante? Devil May Cry. Devil May Cry, yep. The first Devil May Cry, if you played it, was actually really good. It was... It was a lot of shooting, but it was really well done. Mm -hmm. and it, it felt solid. It was a great game. Uh, two came out. It was pretty quick, as I recall. And I was thinking about pre-ordering it, and then, if I remember right, I got sick or something. And I, and I was, I was like, I was gonna do it. I was waiting for payday, 
and I was going to do it like, you know, I was going to do it on Friday, and the game came out the next Tuesday, but I got sick, and then I just didn't do it, and then the reviews came out, and it was just, it was a piece of garbage. I've never even played it, but it reviewed exceptionally poorly. Mm. Um, the one I spent the most money on that I was unhappy with was uh, Halo 3. Uh, remember they it's the one that came with like that big master chief helmet it was like this i mean it was like literally head size. i remember that yeah i yeah. was i was deployed when that released so i don't like pretty much any games that released during my time in the army i know nothing about well that makes sense yeah like, like well they were talking about this is rare nobody's gonna have it nobody's gonna have it uh -huh. and so when i went in uh the, <laughs> I don't know why I always do this, but it was like a day or two before. And I go in there to pre-order, because at the time I wasn't doing it online. That's, that was a while back. You could still, but I was, I don't know, I was going into a Best Buy on the south side of Des Moines. And I walk in there, and like there's like three of them with like the, the heads. And I'm like, are those for sale? Like, Can I pre-order one of those? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, I will spend $150 right now. And oh. I pre-ordered that thing. Yeah. Do you still have it? I do not still have it. I uh, uh, I, I got it, and I was just like, wow, it's a big fucking head that collects dust. Yeah. Like, you could take the head off, and underneath was, like, a thing with, uh, like, a, like, a slot about, like, that wide, and you could store your three Halo games plus the making of discs that came with it. But it was totally <laughs> worth it. Mm. Totally not worth it. You know, what I actually ended up doing was um, I took it to work and I kept it on like one of my uh, cubicle storage things for years. And every now and then one of the guys in my group would come over and he'd take it into a meeting with them just to like mess with people. Why? It only happened a couple times. And it was always the same guy. He was a little, uh, but <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I ended up selling it. I sold it on Craigslist with the, or no, 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 I'm sorry, I did not sell on Craigslist. I went to Half Price Books. <laughs> Alright, well, we've touched on, I guess, sequels that have kind of bombed, but what about sequels that, gameplay-wise, were still pretty good, but just weren't quite what we wanted? And I have a very good one. Uh, Dead Space 3. Dead Space 1... I fucking love that game. Scary as shit. I played it without the lights on, and it was just perfect. Like, to me, that was the perfect game. Two was awesome because you got to revisit the Ishimura. Like, I love that part. I was like, oh shit, we got to go back. Like, and you're like, you're walking down the halls where, like, all this shit jumped out, and you're like, I remember this part. I remember being scared shitless. And it was just that like nostalgic like revisiting just like oh god but then like three came out and it was just like uh okay so it's more of the same like it just like the environments were cool like going to the broken up ships going to the you know ice planet and starting off in the city there was definitely more uh variation in the environment but it was just it it felt so forced so old like, they changed it up almost too much. Like, that was... It was a good game. There was some good gameplay. The story, I think, was fine, but... It yeah. was just, like... Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't... And I, I... I know a lot of people feel the same way. Like, they love Dead Space, and the game was still good. It's just, like... We just didn't feel it for that one. I think my favorite part of Dead Space 3 was actually all those commercial or like clips they put on youtube ahead of time that was like soccer moms played dead space 3 and they what? Just, they'd, they'd put them in to play it and they'd give them a few minutes of bum -da -dum -da -dum, and then they'd throw a scary part at them and the soccer moms are like, ah, ah. I, I don't remember that yeah they're there they're there i will I promise you those clips are there i will definitely look that up that sounds funny hmm Games that didn't quite make it that were, but were okay. Yeah. It's like it's kind of like not to beat a dead horse, but Borderlands the pre-sequel. <laughs> it's a, you know it's a good game. It just wasn't quite. Short, yeah. Yeah, it fell short of the mark. 
Yeah. Actually, oh, actually, I do know a game that I pre-ordered. It wasn't a sequel that turned out to be exceptionally average. Was uh, exceptionally average. I like that. Yeah. It was uh, <laughs> after the Punisher movie came out with Thomas Jane playing Frank. Um, they made a movie, a uh, game where he did the voice of the Punisher which is good because he was the Punisher in the movie at that point. Mm -hmm. And that game was like, they sold it on, we're having these hardcore, like he will be torturing bad guys because that's what Frank Castle does. He he gets what he wants by any means necessary. That means he's got to torture a bad guy, he's going to torture a bad guy, it's just what he does. And they kind of sold it on that. And they kind of had pictures in some of the game magazines that were coming out, and I, I was still reading those at that point. And... Um, I pre-ordered it, and then like, oh boy, a week before it came out, two weeks maybe before it came out online, they started saying, well, we couldn't get past the ratings board, so we kind of censored everything. Oh, jeez. And then I'm like, I'm like, oh, shit. But, and then I was like, well, I guess I can live with that. So I paid for, I finished paying for it. And they, they didn't so much censor it. They, I mean, they did. They cut a little bit of it out, but they made it all black and white. There was no red blood during the torture scenes. They don't want to see you shoving somebody's head into a table saw or something like that. Ah. Or putting a guy in a wood chipper. But the game itself was just so fucking boring. First two levels, I was like, up to do, this is great, this is great. And, you know, third level, same thing. Fourth level, same thing. Fifth level, same thing. Mm -hmm. Like, ten hours into the game, I'm like, just be over. I'm going to finish yeah. this because I bought it. But just please get over. Do me, I mean, that or kill me, something. I just, I can't handle this anymore. But it wasn't a bad game. It was just, it was just the same thing over and over. Like, they, they, they didn't find the fun loop. They had a good premise that held it for a couple levels. But once you get past that, if that you know, that fun loop isn't there, it's just the game's just not any good. Come out, at best. How about you, Guido? You got anything? You've been awfully quiet. Barbie's horse adventures. What? Bar what? Barbie's horse adventures. Barbie's horse adventures. Guido loves that game. He told me. I yeah, didn't. I own that. What? I didn't even. Is that a real game? Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh wow. I'm totally downloading that next. <laughs> the, Sounds... the cover looks like a bestiality porno, but it's, oh. it's a real game. <laughs> oh. I all moved away from them on the group W bench. <laughs> well then, anyway, that's interesting. Um, the only game that's really coming to mind—it's not so much a sequel as I mean. It was, it was originally designed to be a sequel, but they didn't have either enough funding or enough content or something. I can't remember what the what the deal was, but uh, the Alan Wake American Nightmare. Hmm. I know nothing about it. Um, uh, oh my God, there's a whole line of Barbie horse adventures. I did not know that. I just knew of the one. <laughs> oh, oh my God. I'm so oh. glad. So, so I'm glad we know that now. now. That's, that's, that's frightening. I'm just that's disturbing. Go on, please. Please go on quickly. <laughs> so, um, basically it picks up where the, um, uh, Alan Wake finished, but mm -hmm. it's got a like new storyline ish and, all, all of the original content seems to still be there, but they were trying to expand on it, and it was a lot of fun. It just similar to the um, Borderlands pre-sequel problem of being short, and like I said, I mean, it, it just didn't seem to be an entire game. It was it was DLC. So, um, if I recall correctly, with American Nightmare, there was. You had to like go from point A to point B, but then to try to lengthen it, they made you go back from point B to point A, like some contrived story reason. Yeah, it's been a been a while since I played it. Yeah, um, that they, they had you like replay levels because reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Uh, I hate that. Yeah. It's, just, it's artificial. 
Did, did uh, you actually enjoy the main Alan Wake game? I did, yeah. That that dark, foreboding, you know, just presence everywhere. Yeah, um, the the Twin Peaks uh, references in that game were all over the place. Yeah. If you ever watched Twin Peaks. And uh, the other thing was, uh, I love the, the TV show, like the Twilight Zone type TV mm -hmm. show. <laughs> that, that was in, like, you go see different TVs and turn them on and, like, watch shows and stuff. Although... I can't remember what it was called. Uh, I do not remember. I, what I do remember, which actually pissed me off to no end, was Alan Wake had an achievement for finding a TV in the game, turning it on, and watching a commercial for, like, Ever Ready or something. It was like a battery commercial or something. Like a legit real-world battery company paid them to put a battery commercial in there, and you got an <laughs> achievement for wow. watching it. Really? Yeah. Huh. I'll have to go back yeah. and see if I can find that. Uh, I would like to see... I know they're not doing Alan Wake now. They're doing that whatever that new game is, but I would... If they could change it up a little bit, I would love to see more Alan Wake. I was a big fan of the shine the flashlight to kind of stun them and then shoot them. Mm -hmm. way. Uh, it got a little bit old towards the end. There, were, uh, Towards the end, there was that one part where you had to like walk through all these electrified wires or some shit, and it was... It was kind of complex, but since you hadn't seen that in the rest of the game, it broke it up really nicely. I think if they had a few more stages of something like that, it would have made it a far stronger game. But it was still, I mean, I'd recommend people play it. It was still a great game to play. Yeah, I mean, really the only thing that irritated me was those flashlights had the shortest fucking battery <laughs> life. I mean, holy crap. <laughs> You know what? Oh, you know what would be better? You're right. The uh, Is it Metro 2032? Yes. Where you got to, like, pump your thing up to keep your juice going? There Love that totally, game. I would totally go for that. Yeah, that That's awesome. a sequel that was awesome. <laughs> I haven't got to it yet. I haven't got through the first one. I started playing it, and it scared the shit out of me, and I stopped, and I was going to oh. go back, and I just never did. The sequel's good. The sequel is really good. I loved the, f the first game. I thought it was great, and then when they announced... I didn't think they were going to make a sequel, honestly. Like, I thought it was just... I thought it was a one-time deal, and then they came out with a sequel, and I was like, okay. I, I may have... I may have pre-ordered that one, actually. I don't know. I think there's multiple books in that series. There are, yeah. Okay, so that would be something I would like to read, too, actually. So, uh, I forgot to bring up a game that it's so bad that I often forget it. Uh, Bioshock 2. I've literally played five minutes of that game and was just like, no, uh-uh, I can't do it. Like, it just did not feel right at all. I don't know, like, I didn't play it any more than five minutes, but five minutes was enough for me to just be like, uh-uh. This is not it. Like, it's not good. So. Didn't they have a multiplayer? I did. I don't remember. I don't know. I, I played the multiplayer a little bit. I wasn't a fan of it, but I'm not usually a fan of multiplayer. No, I'm not part. either. Yeah, that PvP um, thing. I played that game through twice. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, okay. Uh, there, uh, there's... It's... Sorry, I just saw something on my screen that, like, fucked with my head for a second. Um, that game, I think we've talked about this a little bit before, but that game that was released was not the game they were pimping along the way. Along the oh. way, the little, the big sister was supposed to be, like, the full-on enemy of out the, throughout the whole game, and that's not what it turned out to be. And you can see where they kind of rearranged stuff if you go back and kind of... At the time, I could. I don't know if I could anymore. Where you could go, like, what they were saying to what we got. Mm -hmm. Most of that game was pretty good. It was like Bioshock without without some of the sense of wonder that I got off the first one. Um, and the DLC for that, Minerva's Den, is supposed to be amazingly awesome. And sadly, that is one I haven't played. But it's supposed to be really, really good. But... Hmm. I enjoyed it, but yeah, it is it is not in the same league as Bioshock. No. Bioshock was 
as perfect of a game as you can get. And I don't, I say that lightly, of course, because it's not perfect, but there is so much about that game that I just absolutely loved. Just the, the whole world that they created under the sea, the music, the style, mm -hmm. like, it was just, it was beautiful. Um, absolutely beautiful. Part of the issue with Bioshock and also with Bioshock Infinite is they put too much of the story on hidden things you have to go find. Mm -hmm. A lot of the atmosphere and flavor is hidden. You have to go search that out. And it's in, at times, it's, it's, well, keys to, it's keys to understanding certain parts. And, like, that should be given to the player as part of the story. I don't like the fact that it almost becomes optional if you don't find everything. And it's... Not always I don't. Your fault you can't find everything. Sometimes. Yeah, but you you get the gist of the story though. Like, the stuff that you have to find is just like the nitty gritty. Like, it's not really necessary to the whole story. Like, I I search a lot, but I don't always read or listen to things that I pick up. Like, I I find it, but I don't necessarily pay attention to it because I don't know. I'm just too damn lazy, and yeah. <laughs> you know. I was and fan. I still feel like I got like I there was no issues with the storyline. I understood what was going on. Well, I understood the main story, but a lot of the other stuff, like with the twins and how that was going, and some of the backstory for the Vox Populi and stuff like that, you just don't get it unless you find it. It's just literally not in the game unless you go find those whatever they were calling him in that game for you to listen to. Mm -hmm. But you can get that from other things. I mean, that, uh, Bioshock Infinite has other weird racial issues I'm, I'm not completely comfortable with. Yeah. Um, for the most part, though, I, I I do like that game. It's That is also another game that wasn't quite... Yeah. Delivered wasn't quite what was promised. It was still fun, but it didn't have the magic that the first one had. Yeah, like, I, I kind of expected a lot of the fights to be more, not not all of the fights are like where you're swinging around in the sky, and I uh -huh. just kind of, I just, I had the impression that was going to be an option pretty much wherever you were. Right. Like, I was looking forward to, like, having battles in buildings and, like, seeing something open, like a window open and something I could jump on and, like, jumping out the window and like grabbing onto this thing how'd that guy's arm never pop out of his freaking shoulder socket by the way <laughs> how did that not happen he's got strong arms i don't know so harlequin socks uh one of our viewers brings up a good point um conversely dark souls did what Do bioshock did but even worse but that's praised meaning dark souls really doesn't tell you the story like you literally have to dig and a lot of it is still even open up to interpretation, which uh, I believe uh, Miyazaki himself has been purposely vague on the story, uh, just just because. Um, and I would argue, I would argue that I don't necessarily play Dark Souls for the story. I'm definitely very interested in the story, but they don't necessarily i don't know like it's not it's not the the, the soul the soul focus <laughs> uh I see what you did there yeah um whereas bioshock like that was so important to the game the story made the game uh in a sense like without the story Bioshock probably wouldn't have been that exciting. Like, it still would have been fun to play, but the story was just, like, you know. Dark Souls is just a really fucking hard game that we love to play. And... Story for, is not integral to right. the gameplay, yeah. And there, you know, a lot of people actually enjoy games like that where, like, you have to, like, try to figure out what the hell is going on. Uh, I know there are a lot of, like, lore seekers who just love to pour over that and i love watching the videos on people discussing the lore behind bloodborne and dark souls etc um but yeah it's it's definitely not the sole purpose of dark souls dark souls is a hard game i i think a little bit has to do with 
the way those games are perceived based on who created them. Mm -hmm. uh, the Dark Souls guy, he's, I mean, that's his thing. He tells these vague, weird stories. He's like, ah, oh, I'll tell you these vague, weird stories. Uh, and that's great. Ken Levine, though, he's, he doesn't really say that. I mean, he'll kind of hint that it's supposed to be vague at times, but it's also very, very rooted in reality to a certain extent. It's just, it's basically, well, like Bioshock Infinite, like the weird patriotism they had was basically kind of what was there taken to a very extreme area era that area that didn't really exist but could mm -hmm. i mean obviously we didn't have floating cities although that would be awesome uh, but screw that i i, I, I like I, the ground thank you but ken levine also <laughs> has you know he also has to live up to the standards he set with like system shock 2 Mm -hmm. It's also another excellent story with a great ending. So, I, I think he's, I think he he is very odd, and he has to provide a good ending, possibly not with everything in place. You can interpret it a little bit, but the Dark Souls guy, I think, can basically just do whatever the fuck he wants, and nobody cares because that game is the game. I, well, you're right. The game is not known for its story. It's known right. for its difficulty. But there is a really cool story behind it, and I think Bloodborne did a much, much better job at telling the story. And obviously, by saying it did a much, much better job, like, you still have to dig to get the story, but, like, there was still a lot more story in Bloodborne that was explained in-game that you didn't have to, like, search the internet for. But there's definitely a story there, and I actually... I think the story to Bloodborne is really cool. I don't understand the story to Dark Souls. I still don't. Like I, I don't I've I've that. watched videos and everything, and it's still just like, it just goes over my head. Bloodborne has a lot of that kind of like H.P. Lovecraft, Cthulhu Mythos slash the Great Old Ones, mm -hmm. which t trips a very likable trigger for me. Yeah. Big fan it's... of Cthulhu Mythos. Yeah. So how about? Games that keep spawning sequels that just need to stop. <laughs> need to Call not exist. Call of Duty, I think. <laughs> Call of Duty, obviously. Uh, Resident Evil. Resident Evil is... they've That's done. Like, no more. Final um, Fantasy. Yeah. Final uh, Fantasy. Uh, yeah, I wish. Uh, on the Call of Duty thing, uh, sorry, Rob, if you see this. Uh, my good buddy Rob works. Uh, he's a PR for Activision. Oh. But they're right. Fucking Call of Duty. Stop, yeah. Stop. 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 The thing, the, you know, they ran. Was it? Did they have Guitar Hero or Rock Band? I think they had Rock Band, didn't they? I don't know. I never they, played it. I don't it. know. I think maybe it's Guitar Hero. But they ran it into the goddamn ground and killed it. Oh, Jim Pros. Hey. Um, I kind of feel like Halo's done, too. I wish yes. it was done. Halo was a, an amazing game, but they just, they ran it into the ground. The, the sto I would not, I'm not a fan of the Halo story at all. I only played the first and the second one. Uh, it was about the time that they, like, started taking off that I was in the army, and, like, I just... I stopped caring. Was whatever. Dave Pickles tells us Activision has Guitar Hero in the chat. Thank you, Dave Pickles. Oh, Tony Hawk Skaters, Five Nights at Freddy's. Yep. Yep. Tony Madden. Hawk, Madden. Oh, Madden. Pretty much all, all the sports them. games. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> always, it's essentially the same ga game every year with like something tweaked or something. Right. Bad. But when you're on a, a year-long grinder like that, what other, you know newfangled thing can they come up with and implement and test and ship in 12 yeah. months they, I mean they can't they just yeah. literally can't I don't get sports games to begin with but <sighs> you know I, I've tried them on occasion and every I, I haven't done it in a while I tried it like probably 7-8 years ago I tried Madden again and it's the here's the thing if you're playing a football game like Madden 
if you uh, let's say if both teams line up to do a play and you just like let go of your controller it still plays it yeah. still happen i just feel like i'm not having i'm not really having an effect there yeah um, the last sports game i remember playing was i i think it was a hockey game back on the super nes <laughs> Um, there is a yeah, I played a soccer game on the Super Nintendo. There is a hockey game called uh, NHL Blitz, I believe. I think it's like three on three hockey, four on four hockey, but it's it was a DLC game on the 360, and it's really cheesy. Like the guys have big heads and they kind of skirt around, but like whenever you're moving, like you're like between the menus, instead of making a click noise, just it's just a guy going click, click. Look, look. It's it's really bizarre, but it was a fuck ton of fun. I had a lot of fun with that game. Loved that's it. that's actually pretty funny. <laughs> I I like so. that. Uh, how about World of Warcraft? Has there been a sequel? No, Does not necessarily been? a sequel, but they're pumping out expansions, and well, I feel like the expansions just get less and less interesting but it prints money yeah well that's definitely that's a that's a cash cow for sure that's a that's a money maker that i don't think it's gonna die until it's absolutely beaten into the ground but i if i was blizzard i wouldn't because they got shit on left and right deservedly so a lot of the time for diablo 3. why would they make warcraft 4. why <laughs> I just don't know why they would. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, I guess World of Warcraft doesn't have sequels. It just has expansions, but... I kind of I kind of consider every expansion in World of Warcraft to be basically a new game. Every every now and then when one comes out and they show, like, gameplay videos, I, like... I... It's been a while, several years, since I can recognize the world they're playing in. Even if they label it, like, Stormwind, I... Like, I just don't remember it looking like that at all. They've changed so much with that game. I jumped back on like last year, I think maybe for like two weeks, and I just I didn't know what to do. It was so different. I was just like, that's just one of those games that I can't enjoy soloing. I've I've tried, and it's just boring as hell. Yeah. World of Warcraft. Yeah. Uh, I mostly soloed to about seventy. Mostly. I was about 68, 69 when I quit playing, but um, the thing is, I did have other friends that were playing the game that were higher level, so if I ever ran into any shit, they'd come help me. So I didn't, I didn't and then, like, like w when I joined up, they just, like, started giving me gold, you know, because they had thousands of gold. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I didn't have much problems with anything. Yeah. I, I, I did the, um, when the last expansion came out, I can't remember what it was. Uh, you got panda? a character. No, the one after the panda. Um, it doesn't Cataclysm? Matter. No, that was before. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter. It, it gave you a character boost to like level 90. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I, you know, leveled up a character to the point where I could do that. And because I had a couple of friends that were playing and they were like, yeah, you know, come, get, come play with us. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll be playing like it. it all the time you know okay i've got this character let's go where are you guys yeah you uh -huh. and so i just it stopped kind of trickled yeah. away and i haven't played it since i had a friend send me a <laughs> scroll of resurrection once and i went back where it leveled you to 80 was it 80 at that point i don't even remember it put you at max level it gave you level appropriate gear and you had enough skill points to, you know, redo your tree. The problem was I hadn't earned any of it and I hadn't played in so long. I literally did not know how to build an effective tree. So yeah. I, I, I traveled around a little bit and looked around and like an hour later I logged off and I never went back. <laughs> I just, it, it just wasn't the same game. I mean, if I started over from scratch, I'm sure I could figure it out, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Uh, you know what game we haven't talked about yet? Duke Nukem Forever. Oh. 
Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Does anybody want to? I don't wanted a sequel do, shouldn't have happened. Do we do we really need to say much about that though? I mean, I think it speaks for itself. That would be the winner in the category games we wish could be unmade. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah, that was so disappointing. Very disappointing. Very, very very that, disappointing. That was a fun game growing up, Duke Nukem. It was definitely a game that I remember as a child. It's... I played something on the PS2 I had. Some, I'm not sure which one. I remember like fighting in a theater and at some point if you did something like the screen would open up and like some chick would be dancing or some stuff. Like a little bit of dancing, a little bit of movement. I, I, I think I, that was Duke Nukem. Well, I'm sure it's Duke Nukem. I don't remember that, but... Kaz, Kaz in the chat says regarding Duke Nukem Forever, at least no one compl can complain they rushed it out. That's true. Kaz, you're right, but they shouldn't have rushed out. We talked about this a little bit ahead of time. It's got things in there, uh, game things like first-person um, point-of-view platforming. That kind of stuff got taken out of games over time because people realized it sucked and it was never done properly or well. Yeah, as Harley Quinn Sock says, it's a game from a different era that should have stayed there. I absolutely agree. We may have lost Guido. I'm back. He's back! Yay! Okay. Um, I think that... You can't never lose a Guido. <laughs> you can't lose the Guido. So, I think that just about uh, wraps it up quite nicely. Um, do you guys have any closing comments? Hmm. <sighs> So when this goes to YouTube, um, I want to hear what uh, our viewers think. You know, what what games do they think uh, shouldn't have been made, and uh, the the sequels that you know burned them. You know, let's let's get some discussion in the comments. Yeah, absolutely. We can even discuss a little bit of it next time. Uh, we can, if somebody leaves a really good comment, we'll we'll definitely pick it up yeah. next time. Comments are good. I love them. All right. Uh, Jim, you want to do the closing? You know, oh yeah. uh, website, Twitter. He, he, he has all the he has all the stuff. I got the stuff. Give him the deets. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you want to keep track of it, you just you did. <laughs> quite honestly, I'm ashamed of you. I'm ashamed of myself. You. There will be flogging this <laughs> evening. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Hey, if you want to keep track of the latest updates from the Waffle Squad podca podcast and possibly get in touch with us, we got multiple options for you. Our website is wafflesquad.com. Check it out. Leave some comments. Uh, you can email us over at wafflesquadcast at gmail.com. You can get us on Twitter at wafflesquadcast. And you can always join our community group on Facebook. Just search for the Waffle Squad podcast. Well said. All right. I'm always well said. <laughs> That just about <laughs> does it for well us. Spoken, as it were. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. Uh, we love you. Um, leave your comments, rate, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and we will see you in a couple of weeks. Later, Later everybody. everybody.